What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I'm your host, Reckless Rex Ruger. That's the Alexis Arguello puppet. And I'm your other host, Frank Benji's back with another one. And our hero is here. Literally, our hero. Literally, our hero, Anthony Bizarro. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Here to save the day for us, man. And listen, man, it's I don't want you to think for a second, man, that you're like a runner-up or a second choice because you know I hit you up a couple weeks ago to have you, your uncle, possibly come on, man, or whatever, man. But, you know, yeah. we had this guy on, man. Had a uh, Long story short, he had a bad internet connection. He was trying to do it from a car or whatever, man. We wanted to get content, dude. So I started going through people, man, and it's just like, Bizarro saves the day. That's going to be the headline tomorrow, Anthony. Bizarro saves the day. In our world. One second. My phone, my screen's like completely black for some reason right now. I don't that, know why. That's all right. Take your time, man. You're doing us a solid here, man. We appreciate you. Can you guys see me or no? Yeah. As long as you guys can see me, then that's fine. Yeah. So listen, man. Uh, uh, first of all, man, uh, uh, congrats, man. Last, since last time we talked, man, you just had another victory in May. Yeah, coming off a of victory in May. I actually fought. I, I don't know. How, oh, there you guys are. Now I pop back up. Yep. That was weird. Um. Yeah, it wasn't too far from you guys, and uh, it was, I think it was at the Senate at Seneca Niagara or Seneca Allegheny. I don't know. I get them two mixed up, but yeah, Seneca Niagara Resort wasn't too far from you guys. I was closer to that because I, I wanted to go up there and check you out for real in person. Yeah. We'll be there, man. We'll be there for one. I mean, we're in upstate New York, man. We don't have a good excuse to not come to one, man. You know. I, I think I think they're doing another show there in October. I'm not 100 percent sure yet, and I might be I might be on it. Now, you got a fight coming up in August, though, man, right? August 3rd? Two weeks out. Yeah, two weeks out. Why does Box Rec still not have an, uh, have an opponent down? Do you have an opponent? Yeah, we got an opponent. Um, <laughs> Box Rec is shady like that. They don't want to give us no info. Well, my uncle is promoting the show, and what he, he literally, he'll drop, like, because sometimes what other promoters, promoters will do is they'll go on there and they'll, like, you know, they'll see that I'm fighting him. They might try to get on there. So he'll put it up on there on the last minute. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Another good thing, though, man, is that when we did your last episode, man, and it's good to see, man, you know, that you're a young up-and-coming guy, man, with a lot of hometown support, man, because tons of people viewed that episode, man, so you got a lot of love, man. I mean, dude, you got more views on your episode, man, than a lot of goddamn legends we've had on our channel, you know? Yeah, yeah I mean, like, my, the, my my people here, the people that do support me and actually, you know, that, you know, that are for me, like, genuine, um, you know, they show a lot of love when when it's due, you know, and I, I appreciate them. You know, it, every time we do a show here in Erie in my hometown, it's an, it's always an amazing turnout. Place sells out. Everybody comes out. Family, friends. It, it's it's awesome. Yeah. Although, still fighting at lightweight, though, correct? Yeah, still fighting at lightweight. And it's actually making 135 is so easy that I might fight at 130. But I did a test run. I made it. I made it in the gym. Like it's super. It's too. It's too easy to make. One thirty five is a hot division, though, man. It really is. I mean, not that one thirty is not, man. But one thirty five is just holy shit. The names that are at one thirty five are crazy. We just had Keyshawn Davis on the other day, man. Yeah, no, that's that's huge too. I remember you guys telling me about it. That's huge. You know, having him on here. Um, but yeah, one thirty five is stacked. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of comp, and there's a lot of fights that can be made. You know. Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, so what do you know about this guy that you're fighting August 3rd? Um, I was supposed to fight him last summer, but, um, some things happened in the gym and I ended up getting injured. Um, long story short, um, he's just a tough Brazilian fighter. Um, he's like a 30 pro fight vet. Um, not one of the prettiest records, but he comes to fight. He's always been, he's only been stopped once. And it's, yeah. it was by Odebeck. Um, we just fought Raymond Ford. Yeah. That was the only guy to stop him. And Oh, um, yeah, we were at that fight. We were at that Odebeck fight in the, at the Turning Stone Casino. Yeah. Yeah. So the only guy to stop him was Odebeck. And, you know, he's just tough. He comes straight forward. I mean, there's just no quitting him. You know what I mean? He's going to be in your face the whole night, and you got to deal with that pressure and stuff like that so i just know i like i'm not gonna go try i'm not gonna try to knock this guy out because you know what i mean it, it's damn near impossible and yeah he, you know just i'm gonna sit on i'm gonna sit on you know just box from the outside pick at him and he's gonna run into everything that he needs to run into so, that, got, odebeck fight, that odebeck fight was crazy though man remember we were ringside for that man that was crazy yeah. because Against Ray Ray Ford. Ford was losing and you know he's just 12th round that you know that fourth quarter pressure yeah, if you were in the building, it was nuts. No, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta say, 
I like Ray Ray Ford. I'm a fan of Ray Ray Ford. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not sold on that stoppage still to this day. I don't really know if I love the stoppage. Yeah. Yeah, we walked out of there really second guessing it, man, because like he knocked him around a little bit and, and sent him and, and sent him back into the ropes, man. Then suddenly it was over, man. And I know that he had just been picked up by Eddie Hearn. And you know, I, you know, I, I'm not. I, I, all of this is alleged, obviously, man. I'm not, I'm not insinuating anything, but we know boxing can be a dirty business. Eddie Hearn it was is. ringside too. It is. It is a dirty business, and I think, you know, it was the twelfth round. You know, Raymond Ford was uh, was losing. You know, he was just wobbly. It wasn't like he was like, you know, out cold and right. You know, he was just wobbly. He was just hurt a little bit. You know, who's to say he couldn't have grabbed him, held on for a few seconds and, and survived that last round? You know what I mean? It wasn't a few seconds, uh, Anthony. I don't know if you know this or if you watch the fight, but the fight got stopped with one second. on the Yeah, fight. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was that's, a gift. That was a gift. That's a little ridiculous, man. Yeah. Something like but, that. I mean, actually, still, I mean, we're still seeing awful, awful, awful stoppages and awful scoring, man. And we're always asking people on here and picking their brains, like how boxing does a better job at that, man. I, I, I obviously one of the worst ones recently was that Oshaki Foster one was just a travesty. Yeah, that 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 was brutal, man. That was brutal. I think. Okay, I'm like, you know, I, I, I believe in, you know, boxing being shady and stuff like that. I don't think they could, I don't think Top Rank could market um, Foster like that. So I don't think they wanted him as champion because they just couldn't market him. You know interesting what I mean? theory. Yeah, interesting theory. Plus, uh, you, you, you know, obviously Kinsayo doesn't have that many more go-arounds. You know, I, I, I feel like for some reason there was like a sentimental push, it seems like, to want to get a belt on him, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. He was like always like the boy who cries wolf. Like he always came up short, like Stevenson. Um, yeah, yeah. Neverette. Like that was a good fight. I actually thought he won that fight against Neverette. But, um, yeah. You know, the boy who cries wolf, like, he always came up short in all his title fights. You know what I mean? Yeah. What are you getting better at, man? Like, where do you feel like you're growing as a fighter? You're still, like, a young guy, man. But, but you know, but over these last couple of fights, especially over since that last fight, since we talked last, man, like, what have you been specifically working on? Or what do you think that you've, you know, really taken big steps in getting better at? Um, It's a lot. You know, I'm always working on new things and adding new things to the toolbox. And um, Wait, we lost your camera there, man. We lost you. Oh, hold on. Back? There you go. Okay. So I'm always adding new things to the toolbox. But, you know, as I'm, as I'm getting older and getting into a tougher competition and, you know, sparring with tougher competition and, you know, learning things from different guys, um, I'd say just, you know, my composure, you know, as you're dealing with, you know, a lot more pressure and, um, and rounds and stuff like that. You know how how to stay calm. You know when you're dealing with certain things. You know what I mean. Yeah. How to stay sharp, stay calm under pressure, things like that. You know, because I didn't. I, I I've seen I've seen it all. It's just now I'm just you know just trying to get a lot more you know calmer with things. Well, that well that last fight you had in May ended in a unanimous decision, man, and that was the first time, man, you'd gone to the cards in a while. Yeah. Um. Since my second pro fight. Um. So. I'm not. I'm not gonna speak on it in the in the fifth round. I got caught with something to the body, and yeah. uh, I didn't go down or nothing. But it just kind of it just kind of slowed me down a little bit. But um, uh, you know, he was a tough. He was a tough veteran. He knew how to survive. Um, I think if I would have put my punches together a little bit more, I think I would have stopped him. Um, it, it was real close to stopping him. Um, I just think if I would have stepped on the gas a little bit more, I could have got him out of there. That's yeah. some. Is that something that makes you? Like in the future, does it make you want to do like like more core work and make sure that your midsection is, is impenetrable? No, I was just I, mean, I do do a lot of core work. Um, at least you know after every workout or before every workout, uh, do like you know a round of sit ups nonstop, another round of sit ups nonstop, leg lifts nonstop, plank nonstop, just you know something going. I was up on the scorecards. And I was, you know, having fun, and I, yeah. my hands weren't where they should have been, and yeah, I ended up <laughs> <the> <laughs> yeah. we're certainly not pointing the dirty end of the stick, man. You, you know, me and Benji's core is uh, is not a pretty sight at all, man. Not yeah. at all. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like a couple of pregnant women. <laughs> I, I tell, like, man, so you guys know, you know, I've told you a lot of my family, everybody, everybody fought. Yeah. So, you know, they all fought at lightweight and there was like one heavyweight, you know, Johnny, you know, he was lightweight. My dad was a lightweight. My great yeah. uncle, grandpa, they were all lightweights. Now, man, they all got bellies. It's yeah. like, they're like yeah. huge balls. They all blew up. <laughs> and I, I know after I get done fighting, I'm going to blow up because, you know, I like to eat. I can eat a lot. Yeah. You're Italian. Yeah. You're supposed to be able to eat a lot. <laughs> yeah, Almost a like lot. a requirement. <laughs> yeah, I can eat a lot. <laughs> Something we didn't hit, hit him on with the first interview was, uh, uh, this is a question we like to ask now a lot. After a big fight, after a big win, what's your go-to meal that you just got to have? Yeah, what is the go-to, man? You made weight, the fight's in the books, man. What do you got to have right afterwards, man? Like after weigh-ins or after the fight? Yeah, after the fight. After the fight, yeah. After the fight, it, it all it all depends. Like, okay, so if I'm in, if I, I, I was in um, Niagara Falls, like I immediately just wanted some, like I wanted a whole pizza to myself. I just wanted a whole pizza. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just wanted a whole pizza. And then, you know, I ended up getting the whole pizza. I pounded it. I was going to say the night in Niagara Falls, but I was like, just give me a pizza. And then me and my girl, we just drove back to Erie. And just You're talking about pounding a pizza, man, like somebody pounds like a beer or a drink. I just pounded yeah. a whole pizza. <laughs> yeah, I just eat the whole pizza. And then, and but like after that, I, I won't, I'll go back to eating normal because I don't like to pick out too much because, you know, right now I'm on the level where I'm fighting every, you know, so and so. Like I'm very, very active right now. So I'm going to be fighting like every three months. So, yeah. So I really don't want to blow up and wait. You know, I want to just keep under, you know, keep that under control because I'm be fighting every three months. And nowadays, and nowadays, man, you don't need a lot of fights under your belt, man, to get yourself. You know, it used to be back in the days, man. You wouldn't be entering a title picture until you were over 20 fights. But now we're seeing guys, man. You know, we saw like Lomachenko, his second fight of his career. He's fighting for a belt. You, you know, we've had a bunch of young fighters on here. We just had Keyshot on talking about 2025 is going to be his year for a belt. He's he's only got a few more fights than you do. You know, I yeah, think he's yeah. like 10 and 0, 11 and 0. Yeah, I mean, like even Tiafimo, when he became world champion, he didn't have that many fights. You know, a yeah. lot of a lot of people didn't have that many fights. I think it's all about, you know, just what names you have on your resume and you know. Yeah. That's it. And then, you know, I know after I know um after, you know, a few more fights, I just I really want to step it up. You know, I want I want I want to get bigger names, better names on my resume. I really yeah. want to step it up because you know what, what do you, what are, you know, what are guys, are guys fighting for just, you know, the image of being a boxer? Are you fighting for legacy? Or, you know, everybody has a purpose on why they're fighting. And I'm yeah. fighting because, you know, of course I want to make money, but my ultimate goal is to, you know, become world champion someday. And that's yeah. why I want to fight. So, you know, after these next couple of fights, I want to start getting some big names and, you know, catch, maybe catch some people on their way out. It all, it all depends. Yeah. No, I was gonna say, uh, I was gonna say, I don't know what they're doing down there in Erie, but shout out to your barber because that fade and lineup is. Cool. I just got, I just got chopped up today, man. Shout out Lou. Um, yeah, my yeah, shout Lou, yeah, yeah, shout him out. Yeah, shout him out. He's got Lou, you tightened man. up, man. <laughs> yeah, he just chopped me up today. And. and and now you talk about, man, I, you know, obviously we're talking about, you know, being in title contention, man, you know, early, early in your career. Have you and your team sat around and thought about, you know what I mean, like when you would realistically like to be in a world uh, in a world title fight scenario? I mean, you know, could it be as early as 2025, 2026? I mean, like, what are you looking at realistically? Realistically, maybe like 2025, 2026, maybe get, you know, like a minor title, start getting my feet wet. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, me and my uncle were talking. I got plans to go with um, Don King after yeah. November, after November, and um, sign with him. And you know, because a lot of these promoters around here, they they can't do much for you. You know, you got Eddie Hearn, you got Bob Arum, you got Don King, and you got uh, Al Heyman. Oscar, yeah, and Oscar, and yeah. Oscar, and Al Heyman. You know, those are you know your big name promoters and you know if you want to if you want to do something you know those are your guys so um but we're you know me and my uncle talk we talk um a lot you know about uh future plans and stuff like that and 2025 2026 you know that's when we're you know i think i'll be ready and developed enough and she's ready to go and never you can never scoff too much at that turkey olive shake money either 
<laughs> yeah. Hey, that's that's something that you know yeah. he might end up buying every platform too. You know. I know. Yeah. It, it's it's crazy. You know, boxing's changing, and you know it's it's pretty it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. It's tough with these promoters, man. You know, you, you just rattled off a lot of names there, man. How ultimately do you decide on Don King? Uh, you know, uh, obviously at one point or another, man, all these guys' names have been dragged through the mud. You know what I mean? All their honesty has been questioned. You know what I mean? Don King included. Oscar, you know, obviously Canelo's made accusations about Oscar's honesty and yeah. paying them. You know what I mean? We've heard stories about all these guys. But when you sit down and talk to your team, how do you arrive specifically at Don King? Like, what is it that attracts you to, to going with him? Um, you know, my uncle working for him, um, you know, my uncle, I trust my uncle, um, more than anybody. He would never steer me wrong. He would never put me in harm's way. Um, you know, he has, he has, um, his best interest at heart for me and he wants the best for me. So, you know, for him paving that way for me and him giving me that advice, um, that's what leads me to Don King. Um, people could say what they want to say about him. Um. You know, I'm sure, like like you said, you know, everybody's had their bad experiences with whoever. But, you know, whether it's Oscar De La Hoya, Al Heyman, um, yeah. you know, such and such, you know, that's them. Maybe it was just them who had a bad experience with them, you know. So, you know, I trust my uncle a lot and what he has planned. You know, he, he's got a blueprint, uh, bleh, a blueprint with a lot of things. So, you know, I just trust him a lot. I trust his word and, you know, what he has planned and um, what God has planned, too. You know? Well, at the last press conference, it looked like Canelo was ready to strap on the gloves. Never mind his current opponent. He was ready to go after Oscar. Man, I don't – I think it's more so Oscar just talking so much trash and just getting yeah. under his skin, you know. And I, I really don't like Oscar myself, though, just the type of person he is and – you know, he's not really there for his fighters. and Yeah, I've heard that a lot as, as a promoter. And I loved him as a fighter. Loved him as a fighter. Oh, yeah, me too. I, you know, there's stuff that I steal from him that I add to my toolbox. Yeah, love him, man. I loved him as a fighter, man, but have not heard the best things about him as a promoter. So, uh, so, uh, so uh, obviously, you know, your uncle is in your career in what mode I I at this point? Trainer, manager? So, he's, a, he's, he's my promoter. Okay. Um, my manager, um, you know, my advisor, you know, as far as, you know, what moves, what fights to take, you know, he pretty much calls all the shots. Um, I, my trainer drew, you know, that's my, that's my coach. Um, you know, just pretty much my uncle, he'll, he, he has, he's, he, you know, he has the, the path for everything. You know, he just overlooks everything. So yeah. gets, all, gets me all my fights. He's just, you know, he's the man. He gets everything done. You need I those did. people. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 even better because it's family. I can trust him. You know what I mean? And yeah, we're in this together. So if I lose, he loses. If I win, he wins. You know, and if if I win, we win. And you know, you're more invested when there's it's family. You know what I mean? Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah and it's like sure. It's it's kind of it's it, it hits a little bit different because, like, I know a lot of these guys out here. If they like, a lot of people would love to be in my shoes at like to have their uncle as a promoter because you know, promoters, you can't really trust promoters. No, you can't really trust matchmakers. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a little bit different having your uncle as a promoter, you know, I mean, that trick goes all the way down, man. I mean, we even see it with judges and referees. I mean, you know, there's a lot of mistrust in boxing, you know? Yeah, there is, there is like, I really, it's, it's, it's a dirty business. You know, you guys know it's dirty. Yeah. Mistrust, it's mistrust and it's misuse of power in boxing. Yeah. yeah, 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 there's certainly a lot of that. Now, did you experience that in your last fight because you had been on such a, a good knockout streak? Like when you hear that it's going to the cards, you know, how, uh, you know, a, 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 as a young up and coming boxer yourself, you know, the, it, you know, when you're waiting around for those scorecards to be turned in, is it weighing in the back of your mind? Like, you know, obviously you probably felt pretty confident that you won that fight, but yeah. so do a lot of guys, though. I, I, I mean, are you on pins and needles? And even when you're in there prior to the decision, you, you, you know, do you feel more pressure or put pressure on yourself to say, wow, boxing is still churning out a lot of shitty decisions, man. I, I you know, I, 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 it's much better, behooves me much more to knock this guy out. Um, you know, like, well, with my last fight, I was kind of a little pissed off because I've won. So the judges' scorecards were 60 to 54, 60 to 54, 
and there, there was this one female judge. Um, she ref like maybe four pro boxing fights yeah. in her life, and she it was like fifty nine to fifty five. So she gave him one round out of the six, and that kind of yeah. pissed me off because he didn't, you know, he didn't win. There was nothing he he could do to possibly win yeah. any of them rounds. Right. So I don't know what she was seeing, and so I kind of got you kind of you know it is what it is. You know, I mean it was a shutout, but um. You know, sometimes, you know, you could feel if you're winning a fight and stuff like that. So, I mean, I don't know. Is it, some of these some of these decisions lately, though, like on the higher stages have been yeah. outrageous. Like, I think it was um, like Tank's fight with Ryan Garcia. I think they had one of the scorecards, a draw with even the knockdown. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like. Stuff like that. That's crazy. I'm I'm trying to think of another fight that was like. Well, uh, Shaky Foster, though, man. I mean, legitimately looked stunned. I mean, you know, you could make a strong case that you know you're talking about shutouts that he really did pitch a shutout. I mean, Mark Kriegel, yeah, who, uh, you, you know, who was the unofficial scorer, had it 11 rounds to one, but at the very least, it was 11 to one or 12 to nothing, man. So like when the carpet is ripped right out from underneath you like that, I mean, all that guy could do was just sit there with his jaw on the floor. I mean, that was an incredible and blatant robbery. Yeah. That... I mean, that's scary. That's scary. And, 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 and especially when you ascribe to the old school philosophy of you should go in and actually have to take the belt off the champion and beat him pretty emphatically. Like, Oshaki had a belt, too. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, WBC. Uh, yeah, that's prestigious. Champion. Yeah. I don't, you know, something like that. That's, you know, that it's just not right. But, you know, I, at the end of the day, I think that comes down to politics and, you know, you know, that's. I just think they couldn't, you know, what I, what my theory is, they couldn't market him, and I think that's why they, you know, well, took it from him. Well, Stephen yeah. A. Smith went on record after that fight, and maybe you heard this, but he said pretty emphatically, boxing, what are you doing? Fans are trying to come back to this sport, and all you keep doing is pushing and pushing and pushing us away. Yeah, it's not a yeah. raving endorsement. It's not a raving endorsement for the sport. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> no, it's not. So when you're eight and zero right now, man, uh, 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 how much more active would you like to be the rest of 2024? You got the fight in August. What are you looking at? So, uh, you, you know, to round out the year. Huh? How many more times would you like to be in the ring? So I'm fighting in August. Okay. Yep. Uh, God willing, I'll be nine and zero. I'm lined up for November in Erie. Um, for Thanksgiving Eve, um, that I'd like to be ten and zero. Then hopefully they have that card in um, Seneca again in October. I'd like to get on that card, maybe get on that card as well. Probably just fight, you know, up until you know November and uh, October. Fight two more times this year, and so fight three times from August to November. Fight three times, and then you know. So you're looking to get out of this season in like double digit wins. You'll get out of here yeah. like 10 and 0, 10 and 0, 11 and 0 after this yeah, year. That's the plan, you know. That's what me and my uncle talked about. I'd like to get to that, you know, double digits. Um and then, you know, well, listen, man, when you get to that point, you could definitely start popping shit because Keyshawn Davis is only 11 and 0 and he would, he had no shortage of things to say the other night when we had him on. I mean, he was outlandish on here. I mean, we made him assess the whole 135-pound division. You know, the upper echelon guys. I mean, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, he kind of gave us a little report card on all of them. Even went so far as to say that Raymond Murataya is a C-level fighter. I don't know who knows. <laughs> I don't see Raymond Murataya myself, but, I mean, yeah. a scene. <laughs> but you know what, though? That's his job. He's supposed to say that, though, you know, I yeah. guess. I, you know, it's crazy. I like Keyshawn, man. I, I like him a lot. Yeah. I like him a lot as a person. Yeah, next uh, week we're supposed to have another one of his big rivals on, man, Kid Austin, uh, Floyd Schofield. So hopefully he'll have some interesting things to say about Keyshawn on the flip side of the coin. I'd like to see him in that Bula Mason fight. Yeah. Yeah, would, Abdul Mason seems to be the big hot commodity in, in that conference right now. You know I mean? He's the one that nobody's talking about, but everybody should be. Yeah. You look phenomenal in his last fight. And yeah, I, I think – um. What's that? What's that guy's name? That Shakur just fought. Who did Shakur Artem, just fight? Artem. Uh, I don't know how to say his last oh, name. Hartunian. He just fought Hartunian. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think uh, Abdul Mason would have stopped him. Without a doubt. Yeah. 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 So, so, what's your critique 
of a guy like uh, Shakur Stevenson because you always hear two sides of the coin. You always hear he's fighting master class, you know, uh, d- 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 uh, you know, defensive masterpieces, or he's running. You know, what I mean, like, what do you consider him? You, you, you know, because I, I obviously, you know, there's two schools of thought there. You know, what I mean, he can't get credit all the time from everybody for these defensive performances. He gets them from some people, and other people say his fights are boring and he runs all the time. Well. You know, boxing is a science at the end of the day. Yeah. Whether, you know, if you want to see fighting, go watch MMA. There's elbows, there's kicks. Right, there's- right, right. And that's the theory that I'm starting to buy into, too, man. Uh, you know, I might have been a little harsh on Shakur early on, too, man. But then I'm seeing a lot of these guys at the end of their career. Like, you know, like what made me think about it was someone put in the comment section the other day, uh, Sugar Shane Mosley. God love him. Uh, a true legend in the sport, man. He was giving his uh, views on an upcoming fight. And just very slurred. It was very sad or whatever. And someone put in the comment section, see, you know, this is why what Shakur does is so special. What is he supposed to do? Go in and have all these wars and end up like these guys, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, he swims without getting wet. And, I mean, that's part of the game. You know what I mean? If if he's winning and it's boring, so what? He's still winning. He's still yeah. living. He ain't leaving there without a check. Right. You no, know, he's right. still getting a check. He's still winning. He's still champion. You know, um, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's boxing. It's not, you know, fighting. You know, it's right. If you want to right. see, right. see wars and all that brutal shit, you can go watch MMA. You know what I mean? That's yeah. for the casuals, though. I think people that really appreciate boxing appreciate his style and his yeah. ring generalship and how he fights. You know what I mean? Agreed. Yeah. I- I like to think about it like the NFL, man. If a team goes out there and just runs the ball a hundred times and wins the game, is anybody going to be like, "Oh, you didn't throw any sixty-yard bombs"? Right. Yeah. Right. It's not how you get there. I mean, it's just the fact that you get there. You know, what I mean, exactly. and you take another W, and you take another W on. Now, 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 before we let you get out of here, obviously, you still are a hundred and thirty-five pounder right now. So I'd be remiss to not. We got a couple. Well, for, well, at the end of this year, we have a good 135-pound m- matchup. You know, does Loma still have anything left in the tank, man, to offer up? Uh, you know, of course, n- no pun intended. Anything left in the tank when he goes up against Tank? Um, I think that's a good fight for him. Um, you know, I, I I understand that Tank's a phenomenal puncher. Yeah, you know, I think he's the best at 135. But from his last performance, I think that he gives up too many early rounds. And I think Loma can capitalize off of that, that he gives up too many early rounds. And, you know, I think he'll, he'll, he'll take full advantage of that. And, you know, Loma's a, Loma's a, uh, you know, he's been on the world that those, um, those big stages that where Frank Martin has, hasn't, and, you know, he's been there and, and he's dealt with that pressure and, you know, he's, he's seen that type of style. So, you know, I think I think he has enough, you know, gas in the tank for Tank, and I think he can, you know, I think he'll do really well in that fight. I yeah, think, I think I think you hit the nail on the head because honestly, I think the best person that almost had a chance to beat Mario Barrios and he got dropped in the eleventh, but he was winning all the whole fight. Yeah, yeah, he was out boxing him. Um, he was winning, and that's because he gives up too many early rounds. He gives those rounds away wants to sit there okay pick 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 walk you down kind of like canelo and then just boom you know wait for you to just run out of everything and just then just drops it on you yeah and i think and 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 tanks trainer calvin ford keeps on insisting that we haven't seen like the best tank yet there's still things in this toolbox that haven't come out yet so like i think this is a good litmus test man for him man because lomachenko is certainly the regardless of whether he's passed his quote unquote past his prime he's still got he he's still got a, a skill set that's going to really have to make you be on point you know what i mean he's he, uh, you know you're still going to have to come out and fight an amazing fight and not make too many mistakes against loma so i guess this is how we'll find out man it, it, it's a good test to find out out, like what tank really is all about yeah yeah no seriously i think and this so i think in my opinion i think it's the best name on his resume yeah and Loma has just fought two great fights even though people say that he lost the haney fight he still fought a great fight and then he just and then he just looked like vintage roma against cambosis you know he's so we gotta stop cambosis too yeah he was gonna yeah yeah and then he and stopped then, big way too he, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he really beat him up the whole fight and then stopped him. Yeah. <laughs> was, I mean, it was really vintage Loma. And and, and Loma's going to show Tank a lot of those things that he hasn't really seen yet, man. You, 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 I mean, all those weird angles and, and that crazy footwork that Loma has and just, you know what I mean? Like, huh? 
the matrix. the matrix yeah yeah if he shows up and he's vintage he's vintage loma and still has a couple of tricks up his sleeve it, it's a tough night for tank i think I, he, I believe so too what'd you say bungees and he did beat haney that was yeah i mean we thought he beat haney yeah going back and watching it i think he did also yeah very tough fight to call. And then and then ultimately, though, if we play devil's advocate and Tank does get past Loma, obviously, you know, there's a big war going on, man, back and forth between the two of them and what people really want to see. You know, stylistically, we were just talking about Shakur. How does that fight play out, man, a possible Tank-Shakur fight? Um, Shakur ain't going to be there to get hit. He's not going to be there to get hit. Look at um, Edward yeah. De Los Santos. You know what I mean? He's a big puncher. Is he a skillful as Tank? No. but you know, he's just not there to he's just not there to get hit. So I think I think he would make that a real boring fight and just move, give him a lot of movement and fight his fight. Yeah. Yeah. Well we can't wait man. happening anytime soon though. Yeah, I don't think it's happening anytime soon either, though, man. It seems like sometimes, man, like a lot of these guys, man, no offense to any of them, man, but sometimes it seems like they like to beef on Twitter more than they actually like to sign contracts and get in the ring. I Shakur's having a mental breakdown right now, letting all this stuff get to his head on Twitter right now, man. He's I mean, Jesus, nuts. man. I mean, come on. He's going after uh, who's the rappers he's going after? Mace and uh, who's the other guy that he does the podcast with? Cam uh, Cameron. Cameron, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, he was uh, uh, Steven Jackson, the ball player. He, yeah. And he was even just, he was just fighting with Bruce uh, Carrington, too, on Twitter. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just pe people are allowed to have opinions. You shouldn't let, you know, at that level that you're on, you know, he, you know you're leaving with a check. You know you're winning. Why are you bothered? You know what I mean? People are allowed to have opinions. Just just keep, you know, just keep going. Yeah. I feel like I feel like Cameron said exactly what Shakur needed to hear, though. You a boxer and you tough, but in these streets, this shit's a little bit different, man. It can be. It can yeah. be, man. You know that. Yeah, streets are a lot different than, you know, being in the ring, and that's why I don't get involved with that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one thing we didn't ask you the last time, man, that we've kind of added to the questions, though, man, and uh, I don't think we got your opinion on this the last time. If you got to fight the best round of your life, man, you got to give the best three minutes of your life, and you've only got one song to do it to, man, what's Anthony Bizarro's go-to song or artist? And what's bumping in your head, man, that gets you fired up? Thunderstruck, ACDC. Yeah, all right. Good old fashioned rock and roll. See that, man? <laughs> and by the uh, way, man, Arturo shout Gatti. out to the great Arturo Gaddy because that was his entrance music, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing because, you know, I think Arturo Gaddy is one of my favorite fighters. And, uh, Me, too. You, know, hearing, you, knew, you know, when you hear that, that thunder, you know, that thunder, when he was walking, yeah. out, you know what that means. You know, you're coming, yeah. out, you're coming out to a, you know, there's gonna be a knockout. You hear that? Coming yeah, you're out. definitely getting your money's. You're definitely getting your money's worth if you're in the building that night, man. Yeah, absolutely. You're not gonna see no. Uh, uh, you're not gonna see no defensive masterclass. You're not gonna see a Shakur Stevenson style fight in there with when Arturo's in there. Nah, you see bombs dropping, man. Well, listen, man. Uh, as always, man. Great catching up with you, man. Man. Oh, Best absolutely. of luck in August, man. Yeah, we appreciate you bailing us out, man, and us getting some content tonight, man. I'm glad I reached out to you, man. I mean, I know we were going to get something scheduled here soon, anyway, man. But I'm glad we got a yeah. chance to get up uh, before your fight in August, too. We'll definitely get up uh, after the fight, too. Most definitely, most definitely. You know, it's always good talking to you guys. The podcast is growing. I love it. We you appreciate know? that. Yeah, you've always been supportive, man. We appreciate that, man. And uh, and. And that's why we know, man, that when you're when you're when you're rocking that gold strap, man, that you're going to be coming on here chatting with us all, all day, man. Just you know, shoot a message. That's I'll the future lightweight. That's the future lightweight champion in the world, or 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 junior lightweight. You know, if you choose to go down to one thirty, man. But you're getting a strap somewhere. God damn it, you're getting a strap yeah, somewhere. We gotta make it happen. No doubt about that, man. Well, listen, man, you know, we appreciate you, man, giving up some of your Friday night to talk to us, man, as always, my brother, man. Love you, man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you guys, man. Seriously, thank yeah. you. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon, my man. Thank you. Have a good All night, right. brother. All right. Later, man. Love that kid, man. That's a kid that's going places right there, man. Anthony Bizarro, man. Uh, uh, another guy from the Northeast. This is where we breed him, man. We make him tough out here, man. Where the hell is he from anyway, man? Joyzy? Oh, Erie, Pennsylvania. That's right. Pennsylvania. Yeah. See, see, I had Arturo Gatti on the brain, man, because Arturo Gatti used to fight out of Jersey, I think, man, by way of, of, uh, of Montreal. Love Anthony Bizarro, man. Currently 8-0, 5-0.
five knockouts, man. Did us a salad uh, and w- allowed us to get some content tonight. We, I, I was about to schedule something with him before his upcoming fight here in August. Uh, we ended up getting it uh, a little sooner than we had planned on, man. But uh, look at Anthony, man. Living his huh? darkest hour. Yeah, Anthony Bizarro out there in the backyard, chilling and chilling in the lounge chair, living his best life, man, and not worrying about anything. A couple weeks out from his next fight, right? That's the way he should. Locked in in his bag. And and why should he be, man? Why should he be? He looks great, man. He just got a nice tight edge up, man. He's all cleaned up and dapper, dude. He's ready to go, man. He's ready to. He's ready to tack on another W, man. I mean, haircut was clean. Shout yeah. out. To- well, that's good because I don't want to blow him up right here, man. But his box rec picture, man, he looks like he's a hostage in Beirut somewhere, man. So, I mean. That looks like a mug shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Anthony, man. I, I didn't mean to blow you in, man. But anybody can look you up on box rec and find that picture, dude. So, I mean, it, it's public domain at this point, my friend. You know, I mean. But love that dude, man. Love what he's doing, dude. He's going to be one of those world champs that's going to be on here chopping up with us all time, man. We've laid great groundwork with that guy, man. I feel like, you know. Well, you know, we've got a real good bond with him, man. He's always super supportive of the podcast, man, and loves what we're doing, man. And, uh, you know, we certainly love what he's doing, man. Currently fighting at lightweight. I think he gave us a little, uh, I think he gave us like a little, uh, uh, a little scoop there, man, when he talked about possibly dropping down to 130 in the future, man. But, hey, anything that guy does, though, man, or that he touches is going to turn to gold. Also, big news that he might be, uh, uh, in line to sign with Don King. That's huge news for him, man. Don's going to get him some huge fights. I got to bring up the fact that he said that Shakur was beefing with Shushu. I know. Crazy. Uh-huh. Dominate him. Well, there's still a couple of weight differences. I mean, there's still a couple of weight conferences between them, too, man. Shakur seems like he picks all the wrong battles. I mean, like, no offense, man, but you want to fight right now, man. Uh, your top three that you're beefing with instead of guys in your own division are Shushu Carrington, a super featherweight, and two retired rap stars. I mean, <laughs> two fifty I mean, year and I mean, what are you doing, dude? I mean, I mean, you know, you're going to argue with fucking Pastor Mace? <laughs> right. <laughs> and Ke- and and Cameron, I mean, when's the last time he was relevant, man? Like, I think he's like what on like uh uh on like you know wow hits of the eighties or like you know what I mean like uh. But Cameron got bars though. We're not gonna say yeah. that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'm not saying that Mace didn't drop some good shit back in the day too, man. But I, uh, you know, at this point, dude, are these the guys you want to be seen at? You know, arguing with and having a Twitter what war with, man, well into the night, man. I mean, it was into the wee hours of the early morning, man, when he was still going at these guys. Apparently, let it go, man. Let it go, man. You know, uh, I'll tell you the guy who I want to see him beefing with. Well, he has beefed with Tank, man. But you know, start beefing with the young lions at 135. There's no shortage. There's a plethora of talented fighters there, man. You know, beef with some of them and then fight them. Hey, there's a novel idea. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to go on a tirade, man. Big ups to Anthony Bizarro, man. So great to have him on here, man. Do we even know Anthony Bizarro's nickname? I don't know. I feel like you said he didn't have one the first go around. Did he not have one? Boy, he needs one, though, man. Is he? B I Z. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to bestow one on him if he has one. And again, I, I guess I'd have to go back to the archives, man, because, you know, people that watch this know that we're big on, uh, big on nicknames, of course, man. But I mean, he's still young, though, in the game, though, man. He's still under 10 fights, man. So, I mean, it, you know, it, 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 it's not outside the realm of possibility to not have a good nickname yet, man. He's got time, man. Anthony Bizarro. Yeah. The bizarre one. <laughs> no, nah, because he's not bizarre. He's a normal cat, dude. He's a normal cat. Down yeah. Here. I mean, he's bizarre in the fact that he likes to come on and talk to us, I guess. But <laughs> I guess that makes him kind of bizarre that he enjoys this podcast. <laughs> With that being said, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Find us on Facebook. Because we're all the way locked in over here. That's what we do. We do this, do it well.
Yeah, yeah. We're locked in, man. You can like and, uh, and check us out on Facebook. There's always constant, uh, you know, current boxing stuff, new fight announcements, uh, you know, new announcements of uh, of episodes that have just been released. We try to stay current and put up stuff when new fights are announced or when anything, when there's any breaking news in the boxing world, uh, upcoming boxing matches, usually start posting them about midweek if anything is going to be is, is going to be going down on Friday or Saturday night. It looks like it's a slow weekend here uh, as this, this is July 19th. Uh, happy birthday to my youngest daughter, uh, 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 Kibbies. I actually got a text here and tell her happy. Yeah. Oh, I knew it was, I was actually looking through photos to post one on Facebook, but I just got caught up at work. I'm the best. I do it at 6 a.m., man. I always beat everybody to the punch, man. I send out the earliest birthdays, man, always, man. Even if I didn't have to work this morning, I'd still be sending out the earliest one, man. But, yeah, check us out on Facebook, man. Like us. And, of course, subscribe and hit the notification bell on this very channel for the best boxing conversations didn't necessarily say we're always talking x's and o's on here although we do manage to get a little boxing talk in from time to time on here man but this is where fighters come people in the boxing world come to chop it up man you get to see another side of them man we like to keep it light and loose and find out what these dudes are really all about man and uh, hopefully people find that interesting and with that being said shout out gary Busey, bitch because i can go 15 seconds with anything and remember, if you want to be a champion, you got to roll with the champs.